Okay, so welcome to video five of the Inventory for Reseller spreadsheet from Paper and Spark. This is Janet once again, and in this video, I'm going to quickly explain how you actually update your inventory throughout the year, what you need to input and what the spreadsheet will do automatically for you. So once you've got everything set up, you've entered your existing inventory and you're entering your inventory purchases throughout the year as you go, you'll want to start updating the spreadsheet as you sell things or take items out for personal use. So first let's talk about as you sell items. Um, anytime you sell an item, you're going to just update the unit sold this year column. So let's say I sell one of my small beige shirts. I would just type in my one and you can see my ending units remaining is automatically going to reduce from 20 to 19. And my cost of units remaining is also going to reduce itself by the cost of one $5 shirt. So now I have $95 worth of shirts left instead of 100. That I originally bought. So that's basically the gist of this. Um, this column is cumulative so if I sell two more shirts later on then I'm going to actually enter three here because I sold one previously and now I sold two so I've told sold three total this year. So remember that this is always cumulative. You add on to the number that's already there. Again, as you enter amounts here in the units sold and your pink columns automatically update for you, your cost of ending inventory right here will also decrease. And again, this is going to be something that's an important number for tax time and it travels to the yearly tab. Alright, so on that note, I want to talk about FIFO and LIFO because a lot of you are probably going to be dealing with this question and you might have even noticed um, when I updated this beige shirt here, what do you do if you have multiple rows of the same inventory item that you've purchased at multiple points in the year and you sell one? How do you know if you sold the $8 shirt, beige small shirt that you bought in November, or the $5 beige small shirt that you bought in December. And you always have the option, of course, of actually tracking your specific goods. Um, and what I mean is like identifying them like in a pile. You know, you keep all your November beige small shirts in pile one and have them identified as such. And then you have a whole separate area for the December beige small shirts in pile two. But chances are you're probably not that organized and you're just dumping all your beige small shirts in one big pile, right? So how do you know which one sold uh, when you have your first sale? Um, let's say we're working on December 15th now and we just sold two small base shirts. Which line do I mark? That's where the inventory methods FIFO and LIFO come into play. And I feel like I've explained these um, typed out at least in the instructions. So I encourage you to read those PDF instructions for the spreadsheet to see another example of this. But basically FIFO stands for first in, first out, and LIFO is pretty much that opposite, last in, first out. So if you're going to adopt the FIFO method and you sell two shirts on December 15th, then you say the first shirts in are the first shirts out. So that means I sold my oldest shirts first. Two from the November bucket. Even if that's not what really happened in real life, it's okay for accounting purposes to use this method. And then the next time two more shirts sell, again, first in, first out. It's the oldest, okay? And so on and so on. So then at the end of the year, if you still have these shirts left, you're left with your newest ones and the oldest ones have sold. So alternatively, if you, if you wanted to use LIFO, last and first out. On December 15th, you sell two small base shirts, which two sold, 
your newest ones sold first. All right. If you sell two more, again, your newest ones sold again. That leaves you taking out of this pile of new guys until you sell all of them and then you start dipping into the old ones. So at the end of the year, what's left in your inventory with LIFO are your oldest purchases and you've sold your newest purchases. Now, if you are unable to uh, easily use a system that identifies your goods, like I previously mentioned, then you are welcome to use FIFO or LIFO for inventory purposes. That's okay for your accounting, that's okay for your taxes, and uh, personally I like FIFO because I think just like chronological sense makes the most sense to me. Um, but the important thing is that you pick one of those methods and you stay consistent. You need to use it from year to year, tax return to tax return. You can't suddenly decide in the middle of the year or the next year that you want to switch from FIFO to LIFO or vice versa. And if you are able to keep your inventory identified, then you don't need to worry about using FIFO or LIFO. So if talking about that hurts your brain, do not worry about it if you don't need to use it. I also want to mention that if at any point in time you sell all your units of, of something on one row and you're left with zero units remaining, you do not want to delete this row from your spreadsheet, okay? If you delete a sold out row from your spreadsheet, um, you are going to get rid of the total cost of it, so your purchases will be wrong, and that is an important number that you need for taxes. So just to reiterate, remember guys, do not delete any sold out rows. We will take care of that at the year end closeout process, which I will explain later. Next, let's discuss these blue columns, items withdrawn for personal use. Now, occasionally, from time to time, as a shop owner, you might take an inventory item out of your business for personal purposes. This could be you gifting something to yourself, you giving something to a friend or family member, you might take it out for a brand rep or something like that. Um, and you have to remember that you cannot get a business deduction or a cost of goods sold deduction for any item that you end up using for a non-business purpose, so for personal use. On your tax return, there's actually going to be a line, a row, where you will reduce your inventory purchases by the cost of personal use items. So on the spreadsheet, I have a special column here where you can note uh, the number of units you may have taken out for personal use this year. So if you decide that you're going to take out, you know, this coffee white small shirt for personal use to give to your mom, you could just put one there and then it's automatically going to track the cost of your personal use stuff and the sum of that column for every tab is going to travel over here to this personal use amount. Again, you'll need this number for tax purposes. And it also will reduce your cost of units remaining and your ending units remaining. So your ending units remaining is always going to be your quantity purchased minus your units sold minus your personal units. Okay, that's how we get to seven here. It's 10 minus two minus one equals seven. And then seven units remaining times $8 per unit gives you a cost of units remaining of $56. That's how that works. Something else helpful to note about the uh, data showing up here on any of your inventory category tabs is that you can filter and sort it to easily drill down or view your data how you want. If you don't see, um, this, this is what it looks like once you have the ability to sort or filter. See these little drop down arrows on all my columns? If yours doesn't look like that, you can easily turn that ability on by highlighting all of row two and you highlight that by clicking the two all the way to the left that highlights the entire row. And then you want to go to your 
funnel menu and just click it. I mean this funnel button, just click it. If you don't have a funnel button in your spreadsheet software, you can usually go to your data menu and select filter. I just turned it off, but that's what you would do. So once you see these little arrow buttons, that means you've turned filtering on. So what are some examples of things that you might want to filter or sort by? Right now, I could sort by size. I just sorted everything in alphabetical order by ascending, descending, descending. So now I'm seeing smalls, all my smalls together, all my mediums, all my larges. Let's say I want to put all my colors together. Now I can see all my beige shirts versus blue versus white. That's how sorting works. Sorting just reorganizes your data. So something else that people might want to do is um, if you enter your purchases out of chronological order, then you could uh, sort them by ascending to put them back in chronological order. Now, what is filtering? Filtering is going to actually hide data that you don't want to see and only show you what you want to see. So you might say, if you filter, you uncheck select all, I only want to see my larges right now. Okay, so the other stuff isn't deleted, it's just hidden. And then to clear it, I go to clear filter. Or let's say I don't want to see all the stuff that's sold out. So I'm going to uncheck zero. Now I'm seeing just my in stock inventory. And then remember to get those back, you can just clear them. So that's how sorting and filtering works.